G'day Cobbers and welcome to Duck Soily Gaming and our first real Let's Play series for Farming Simulator 19 and the 2019 year for that matter. Alright, so we are back at home. We are back in the land down under. We are in a new map by a modder by the name of Deccan Kane and this is the Western Australia map version 1.0.0. So this map is based obviously in Western Australia, uh, in the uh, well-known and so-called cereal belt, uh, and it is based upon our most basic arable crops. It is not intended for our root crops. It's not intended for sugarcane. It's not intended for anything along those lines. It's also not got any animals on it. It is just purely for our grain crops. Uh, and also our cotton, as we have such a big cotton industry. Um, there's over 1,500 hectares of farm, and uh, this is basically going to give all of our farming simulator 19 equipment a bit of a workout. The, uh, insofar as selling points, all that sort of stuff, there are four main points of sale uh, with three grain traders and one bale, straw, hay, and cotton trader. Uh, most of our common use chemicals and the like are able to be bought at the farm which we'll get to shortly uh, with the exception of lime which is available at the dealer and that is some trip away from the farm so what we have actually done is we've installed a new silo at the farm and uh, we have a, uh, a regular run down to the the dealer to buy a truckload of lime and bring it back to us anyway this is Western Australia and we're going to have a whole pile of fun. It is a four times map um, So it is quite big some of the fields are extremely big actually in by by comparison to what we're used to so far in 19 and uh, We're gonna have a lot of fun uh, We do have course play uh, Enabled as well. We will be using course play um, So we'll also be taking advantage of, of that as a wonderful addition to the map and the game anyway Let's get in and have a bit of a look. This first episode is basically just going to be a bit of a look around and an explanation of uh, what we've got, where we've got it, what equipment we're planning on using at this point in time, and uh, we'll do a little bit of a, a tour of the map, um, but not every part of the map because it will take some time to get around. Anyway, so let's have a bit of a look. All right, this is where we spawn. This is looking out towards the farm. Um, you see the Australian flag out there with the uh, water tower. And uh, we've got another Australian flag here, which is all nice to see. A couple of pot plants here, some little palms. Now this is our uh, our farmhouse, our little homestead, which uh, is there. I'm not too sure whether this actually has a sleep function available to it. Um, we may have to actually install either the, the deck chairs or the other farmhouse. But we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. All right. So let's open up the mini-map so you can see what the mini-map shows uh, as we scroll out so you can see the full size of it that is the map as you can see there are uh, what we have 24 i think it was 25 fields um build one up through here all the start up here this is where the, the actual uh property is the farm is proper and the smallest field down here is field eight and uh, then we have all these other fields through here but as you can see a lot of these fields have little areas through them like little islands of of land deformations, um, power lines, there's HV power lines that string right across through there. Um, a whole pile of things to uh, take in consideration. Um, up here, this is the farm and the shop. So the actual, when you buy stuff, it actually does generate at the farm. So the shop itself is at the farm. Uh, the farm silo, we have a farm, that's the default farm silo, which we'll have a look at in a second. And then this farm silo here is the one that we have installed ourselves. Uh, as I just explained, to hold our lime, um, basically. All right, so we've actually bought fields 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11, and 12. Uh, they've got various crops in various states. I think we've got, we've got field 12 and field 4 have just come into harvest. Field 4 being cotton uh, and our field 12 being barley. So they will be our first bit of work we're going to do that there is no grass as you can see so i'm a little bit disappointed there is there's absolutely no grass i don't know what i'm going to do i don't know why i'm playing this map but uh lord of the grass is not happy 
but anyway, we might do we might do a field of grass anyway. We might end up putting a sheep a sheep pen in here somewhere. Um, down here on the southwestern side of the map, this is where our buy points are. We have uh, Cargill, Western Australia, Glenver Hay Trades. That's where our for our hay and our grass and our cotton and our wool. Um, in fact, I don't think it takes wool. Uh, then we have the uh, Grain Trading Australia and Western Australia Grain Inc. Okay, they're the sale points. So if we come in here and have a look at our prices, we can see here we've got Cargill, Glenvar, Grain Trading and Western Australia. So we can sell all of our arable crops, soybeans, corn. Uh, there is nowhere to sell potatoes, sugar beets or sugar cane. Um, nowhere to sell eggs, wool, milk, wood chips. So our grass, our silage, and our hay, and our straw, we can sell all that. That's not a problem. And our manure and liquid manure, there is nowhere to sell that as well. So even if we did have animals, it's not going to help us because we can't really sell anything. So we're probably not even going to buy it. This is just going to be purely a um, a crop map. So that's okay. It's only a bit different. Let's get down and have a look. So we've had a look at the the, uh, the farmhouse. At the farmhouse, we've got a little a little garage here, a little shed. Uh, we've got our Mahindra sitting out here waiting for us. Here's a little shed. So we'll look back at the farmhouse. There we go. That's that's the look we've got. The old squeaky water pump sitting there. A couple of bent bent uh, blades on it. Nice to see. It's got a very good look actually. It, it's very. I I lived in Western Australia for a few years um, and. This is very reminiscent of, of some of the looks of some of the more rural areas of, uh, of Western Australia. Um, so, uh, so hat, hats off to uh, to Deacon Kane. He's done a he's done a really good job with this so far, and uh, I think I'm really going to enjoy this, and I certainly hope you do as well. All right, let's go down to the farm proper and have a look. All right, we're going to zoom right out so we can see what's going on. So there are fences in different areas, not. The fields aren't entirely fenced, um, so there's some fences in some areas and all that sort of stuff, so you just have to be aware of those. But uh, anyway, so we've got some caravans here, this is where the workers stay. The barbecue in there, for the gazebo. Here's the silo that we put in, so this isn't part of the default map, this is the, a silo that we put in that came from, I think it was LS Mod Company. As we peel off here to the right, this is one of our, our big sheds. Now we've got, uh, I think, three of these in total on the farm. Humongous sheds, all fit for the biggest equipment. There's our big water tower there. Come off through here, through the back of this, uh, our main work shed. A little, uh, little pond there, supplies with water. This part here I paved in. I uh, had that, got the wrong paving on it or the wrong coverage, but uh, we'll have a look at that. There's our, there's our shop. So this here is actually our shop. We've also got it as our big maintenance area. And as you can see, we've got a couple of trucks and a tractor in there at the moment, which we'll get to shortly. Another little small shed over there. The left we've just squeezed by. This in here is our main equipment shed. Um, so we've got repair bays in here. We've stowed our combines in here. So as you can see, we've got the Fast 780 series combine. A lovely machine, that one. Uh, some of our tractors are in here, so we've got New Hollands. We've got predominantly New Hollands on this map. We're going to, uh, we haven't used much in the way of New Hollands at all for farming simulator 19, so we're going to give those a bit of use. We have our fuel and our diesel tanks here, um, ready to go. Um, I did notice that he's uh, got a gasoline sign on the tank. We wouldn't actually have that, it'd be just called fuel, but anyway. Uh, over here we have our, uh, what's this one? This one was uh, herbicide. That's our herbicide tank and refill point. And this is our liquid fertilizer tank in there. I'm going to head around the back of the store here. Here's our shed. We've got a few things in there. This is our wash station, our carches over there. And we've got a water tank over there as well. There's our access to the uh, main road. So as you can see, it looks like part of it might have been from the Estancio La Parche map. That looks very reminiscent of the entrance to the farm. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll not worry about that. We'll keep on going. 
over here this is this area just here is an overflow for when we buy equipment it'll actually spawn in here as well as well as in that main area we just were in and we have another shed here which we've got all of our semi-trailer trailers in so we've got our flat beds and our, our trailers and as we said in there we've got uh, our workshop and we've got a t9 in there and we've got a couple of kenworths in there with a the trailer and hook on past here there's our shop icon there over here to the left hand side this is our silos these are the ones that are actually built with the map there's our dump point huge silo system which is reminiscent of what you would see on a, on a farm in, in rural Australia because there's, there's so much distance in between uh, points of delivery and sale that uh, you've got to have enough storage there and here's our, uh, our loading pipe just here All right, that's the silos. Heel on back over here. Now, Deck and Kane has said this is just version one. He is planning on doing some some new, few additions to it. Um, so uh, certainly we'll be looking forward to getting that. Here's another two sheds. So our two main equipment sheds. This is where most of our equipment will be stored. So our ploughs and our cedars and all that sort of stuff. As you can see, we've got plenty of storage there for equipment. Around through this side here, we've then got another little shed over in there. We've got all of our grass work equipment, so we've got our, uh, our baler, our tedders, and our windrowers. And that is basically the tour of the farm. So here where the John Deere is on this trailer, this is where the default spawn point is for all the equipment. Alright, what we'll do is we'll go for a bit of a burn down the highway and we'll go and have a look at the, uh, the sail points. And it, is, it isn't a short drive, so we'll uh, we'll head on over. It is a lovely map. Lucky, luckily, this thing goes uh, quite quick. Um, and uh, I've played it for an hour or so today, just in setting up. And, and I, like I said before, I think we're going to really enjoy this map. It's got all the Australian road signs on it. So we have a look here. 60 kilometres an hour, and we've got a kangaroo sign. So there's kangaroos up all through this area. So uh, we need to be aware of those. You see the telegraph poles, so as opposed to some other maps from some other developers, the details are actually being put in this map, which is glorious. There is no traffic on this map, um, so we can actually go all over the road if we like. There is no traffic, but we'll try and actually do the right thing and stay in the, the left-hand lane. I know you uh, Americans and that will be uh, having a little bit of trouble with that, but hey, uh, you... Uh, we need Rome do as the Romans do, right? All right, da -da 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 -da. It's a bit dusty on the horizon. It's a bit of a, uh, a dust storm. Considering most of Australia is in drought and has been for the last 10 years or so, except for Queensland at the moment, but they've just had torrential rain and all that. That hasn't actually cured the drought per se. It has written off most of the livestock. Old Coca-Cola sign. Looking a little bit worse for wear there. Alright. Heading down south now. So 60 kilometres an hour is the speed limit. I'm doing 100, so um, I'm hoping there's no uh, no local blueies around, local coppers. Uh, if, if they are, I'm in a bit of trouble. But... Uh, it's very wide open, as you can see. A few little tufts in there. So hopefully when we're using course play, uh, course play will uh, correctly navigate its way around those obstacles, especially the, uh, the power poles, the power pylons, which I'll show you shortly. Um, and I know it does do the islands quite well because I've already tested that on a couple of the maps, um, but not on here. Now, one of the things I will actually mention for this map as well before we get started, is uh, the equipment we're starting with is not the equipment that Deck and Kane has put on the map. Um, we have swapped it all out. Now the reason being, I did a bit of a test running course play with a couple of combines and a tractor to unload um, using one of his challenges. And I think he's using one of the modded Australian variants um, that's available at the moment. Um, using that crashed course play and the map. Um, I've since done it with the equipment that I've got here and it didn't crash so uh, 
yeah, hopefully, um, we've, uh, we've, it was just an equipment problem. So here we go, we're coming into Cargill, and this is where all our cell points are. So if I bring up the map, you can see we're right here near the, uh, the cell points. So we're going to peel off here and go to the grain company first. Through the fence. And here we go. These are the big uh, grain storage pits. Now, these things here are mammoth. If you've ever seen these working, they're actually just like a, a conveyor system. They they roll along the uh, the sides of these pits and dump the, uh, the grain into the... Uh, area that's been uh, just fenced off just so it doesn't escape out and go everywhere so um, this is one of the dump points and cell points here and I think in fact we're going to have another double check but I think they all um, yes they, they all take the same crops with different prices you just got to work out which one you're going to so I think at the moment we're actually at grain trading possibly or I've got that wrong no we are at grain trading the one we're at is grain trading, and the one next to us is the Western Grain um, Seller, which we'll go around to. That's in this one here. Now, obviously, remembering these are a sell point, so you've only got a dump point, you haven't got a, uh, a loading point. There we go, and there's the other one there. So that's the first two sell points. Now we'll head on down through here. I think this is just a, uh, a way scale here. Certainly looks like. Uh, might be a fuel, no gas. Uh, anyway, so the scales. I don't know if they're actually working or not. We didn't check that. We'll have to come back to that later on. We've got a load. And then we're going to proceed on down here. And we'll head on into cargo and we'll also look at our hay sales area. Okay, so our hay sales area is here. I'm not sure exactly where the cell point is, so we'll have to work that out. As you can see, there's a whole pile of cotton bales and hay bales and straw bales and all that around here, so that's pretty obvious here. We have another uh, set of scales there for offloading. There's a cargo building. We're going to come down here on the left-hand side of the silos, the main silo here. This is the, uh, the cargo silo point. get to it on the other side this section here is our lime cell point so round about here is the trigger and this is where you buy your lime there is nowhere else in the map you can get your lime unless you buy a lime bag which will obviously appear at the farm but you have to come down here and pick up your lime I've actually set up a course play route so I can just send one of the trucks down here it'll automatically fill up with lime and then return back to the silo and offload it into our silo so we've got our I'm being refilled automatically as I need it. This is our dump point for the cargo sale point. In through there. And that's it. That is the only uh, interaction points you have for the map. Uh, so there's not a lot, but it's just enough to, to do what we need to do. So it's not a, uh, a full blown, all in, all gotcha sort of farming entity. It's just. Uh, your cereal crops that would normally be used in this area of the world and, uh, and I think that's quite good um, some people won't like that but each to their own it's just uh, that's the way Deccan Kane wants it and, and I'm more than happy with that I think it's uh, it's great all right I'm gonna fly back up here to the farm and then we're gonna go through and have a look at what equipment we've got to start off with and uh, then what we might do is we might go and kick start off our first uh, bit of harvesting. Right, we'll head over there and get ready for that straight away. In fact, what we'll do first, we'll go down. Uh, oh, there we go. Straight through the fence. <clears throat> so as you can see, the fence itself doesn't have collisions, but the uh, some of the poles do. I'm just going to go down here, have a bit of a look. Haven't been in here yet myself. A bit of rocky outcrop that we didn't use it for making a field. There you can see the lay of the land, it's all pretty flat. Sporadic placement of trees in between crops, or in between uh, fields, I should say. 
All right, back up through here. I think there's a path that'll take us back up towards the farm, actually. There is a creek that runs pretty much all the way through from north to south as well. Um, we may come to that over here. Here's a nice little flat area. You could probably use that for putting some placeables in if you really wanted to as well. So it's not devoid of areas that you can actually use. And here's the big HV power lines I was telling you about. So they go from one end of the uh, far, well, one end of the, the map to the other. So from horizon to horizon. So they're providing HV power somewhere. Uh, but they just happen to go through all the, uh, the fields in this area. And so when we're combining or, or ploughing or whatever else, we need to avoid those. Have a close look here. Okay. That's what you've got to contend with. So hopefully the field definitions are nice and accurate and uh, we shan't have too much of a problem with, uh, with horseplay. Time will tell. All right. Head back up here. Continue heading out here to the east. Here it is uh, 7.47 in the morning game time. It's uh, relatively bright, but it certainly does look as though it's been a bit, uh, a bit of dust on the horizon, all that sort of stuff. So it actually does, again, it gives you that bit of a look and feel to uh, that part of the country. Uh, uh, right, so here's the creek. Going through here through the brush. There you go, there's the, the waterway that runs basically from north to south through the map. So I'm assuming we can also use that as a water source to refill our water tankers if we needed to, but we don't have any animals, so there's no need for water tankers. <clears throat> Alright. Let's see, I think this will take us back up towards the farm. If not, we might just have to cut through some fields. pond in there I mean certainly he's given us enough areas a couple of cars old cars lying around there he's certainly given uh, enough areas and things to use in case you do want to convert your map a little bit and have some animals and that on here um, what you would need to do is use something like the universal cell point um, and install that on the map um, it certainly doesn't mean you you can't run animals but by default uh, the map is not intended for animals uh, and I, I think that's fine. I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy playing it, like I've said a few times now. And if you haven't already got the impression, I think I'm going to enjoy playing this map. So again, I really hope you enjoy uh, enjoy playing along with this one. Um, it is available from the map is available from the Modding Welt website. I will put a link in the comments down below. Um, and uh, and please don't hesitate to go over there. And if you do download it and you like the map, go back and. Uh, and give Deck and Kane a bit of a shout out and tell him what you think of that. Alright, so we're not going to go straight up there into the farm. Actually, we do because we need to bring one of the uh, harvesters back to the field. So we're going to go back into the farm. Sorry about that. I had one more delivery to do, which I, I was going to wait till you were here. We won't even get a chance to actually do any because we want to talk about the equipment and we're not going to get a chance to... Uh, to start it so we'll we'll start the actual work proper on the next episode all right so here we have one of the trucks we've got a kenworth k100 and we've got uh, a case cotton module machine so uh, what we're going to do is we've got that on the flatbed and we're going to take this up to our cotton field that's ready to harvest along with our other two cotton harvesters which we've already delivered up there and uh, that's going to be our first job for this series, is, is bringing in the cotton. Um, so once we get up there, we'll, we'll just park the truck and then we'll go through and have a look at all the equipment we've got using. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll call this episode quits. And then we'll come back in the next episode and we'll commence our work in earnest with a uh, cotton harvest with, hopefully, three cotton harvesters working off course play um, in convoy mode. So uh, we'll see how that pans out. Lovely, lovely look, isn't it? Really do like it.
waiting for a kangaroo to jump out in front of me. And there's our cotton. And we might have some issues with the cotton harvesters and uh, borders, so we'll have to keep a bit of an eye on it. So what we might do is the when we run this first harvester through, we might uh, just manually watch him and then send the other two after. Most likely what we'll end up doing. Alright, we're just going to unload this here, actually. First in. I did tease my friend Chris Webb uh, on our Discord channel. I, uh, I just did a screenshot and said uh, I'm going to have a bit of a surprise for our next Let's Play. Um, and, and this is it. So um, I'm very happy that we're able to do an Australian map. I, I did enjoy the Outback, Australian Outback mod uh, map. Um, the reason why I haven't continued that on is it's just not finished enough to get my drift. Um, the, the author of that map has done well, but it's just the field definitions aren't good enough and all that sort of stuff. So um, I decided that we wouldn't go back to that. Alright, so what we're going to do is we'll just bring him off. We'll get him ready to uh, to line up and start. We'll actually open him up. And we'll do a first cut. Alright, so the first bit of cotton has been cut. Alright, so... That's where we're going to leave it for today in relation to the tour. Uh, what we will do quickly is, like I said, we're going to have a look at the garage and see what equipment we are using. So you're a fae with everything we're going to be using. And uh, and then that will be it for this episode. So we are using the flat deck trailer. That's the autoload flat deck trailer from our good friend, our Falfa 6945. Uh, it's a fantastic trailer. Um, so we're using that. As I said, we are going to be using the New Holland range of tractors. So we've got a T9. That's our big tractor. We've also got uh, the 8400R JD. That's uh, from Custom Modding. We have the T8 series of New Holland. They're from Stevie. Uh, the T7, again from Stevie. We have the Kenworth T610 um, from Fork Modding. That's a wonderful truck. Um, and I've just released a mod review just recently on that one, so go check that out. Uh, I will put a link in the video. Uh, we have the Kenworth K100 uh, from Talk Modding as well, I think it was actually, uh, which we spoke about previously. There's the class selections. We have three of those, so the 780s. Uh, we have those ready to go. As I said, we have the Case 600 Series Cotton Module Harvester right here with us we have a massive ferguson telehandler we have the mahindra uh, just our utility and getting around the farm we have some crampy trailers for our semi trailer for our truck sorry we have two hall masters by stevie these are the extended versions so they're a hundred thousand liter capacity for uh, doing all of our harvesting uh, with our combines three class vario 1200 so 12 meter headers for the class uh, lexians we have the Conspeed corn header for the Alexians. We have some Agrisim Colty plows, again from Stevie, so they operate a little bit quicker. We have the Lemkin cultivators. We have some Great Plains cedars. Um, we've got three of those from Stevie. We've got Breedle, um, what do you call them? Spreader, <laughs> sorry, uh, for our lime and our fertilization. We have some Pottinger uh, tethers. We have some crone, two Crone Swadro 2000 windrowers. We have a couple of Shooter Maker um, loading wagons. We have a couple of class square bale balers. Uh, we have a bucket and a set of forks or a lifting thing for the, for the bags, if we use the bags. We have a Chieftain Low Loader, which we're getting rid of, so that doesn't really matter. We have the Custom Modding uh, XL Specialized Flatbed Trailer. We have a couple of Schneidwerkswagen Extremo Header Trailers, again, which is something I reviewed just recently. 
Uh, we have the big bags pack, so that's part of that. And we have the LS Mod Company farm silo, as we said previously as well. All right, so that is all the equipment we have. And that basically is the introduction to our series that's just about to kick off. And I hope you're certainly going to enjoy it as much as we, we are. This is on the West Australia map, as we said, by Deacon, Deacon Kane. And it is available on the Modding World website. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be knee deep in some harvesting. So thanks so much for watching. If you like the episode, please press that like button. If you didn't press the dislike button, that's okay. We'll just find you. No, we won't. Anyway, and uh, also, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. We are on the way to 1,000 subscribers. We'll get there at some stage. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a long-term goal, not a short-term goal. And uh, don't forget to press that notification button as well so you're made aware of when new Let's Plays, mod reviews, and live streams and all that are coming up. Anyway, thanks for joining us again. This is Duxoil, Duxoil Gaming, wishing you a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night, no matter where you are in the world. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and we'll see you again very, very soon. See you all later. Bye.